complete to the plate. And... I've just been running in and out, in and out, so when I go back inside, I... Hey, Kimi. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to LRSD TV for this year's coverage of the 2018 Division III high school football game. Tonight, we got a great matchup in store for you guys as we got the St. John's Tigers battling out against the Elmwood Giants. I'm your host, Graham Forsyth, and I'll be joined by my co-host, Evan Samoylov, in just a moment. The last time the Tigers and Elmwood faced off, the Elmwood Giants took the game 45-28 to earlier in the season. A player to watch in tonight's game is going to be number 25 for the St. John's Tigers, Asher Wood. Wood this season had 99 total points scored and had 9 touchdowns. On Wednesday, I was able to catch up with St. John's Tigers coach, Grant McMillan. Coach Grant McMillan of the St. John's Tigers. Coach, congratulations on making it to the final. How does, how does it feel to make it to the final? Uh, it's, it's tremendous. Um, again, that's always coach's goal when you start the season is to make it to the championship, and that's what we've done. Um, again, you always hope that things come together during the season, and we've been very fortunate uh, with the effort from our players and the way things have come together. How big of an accomplishment is this for your school, making it to the championship game? That's tremendous. Um, St. John's hasn't won a football championship in 38 years. Um, we were in the finals two years ago and came up uh, three points short, um, and it still haunts me. Um, but again, it's, it's a wonderful feeling, and like I said, uh, just a tremendous um, acknowledgement of the players' um, efforts. How big of a factor will the run game and the defense be in this game since you are playing in the cold November football weather? True. Um, again, our, our plan of attack is always to have a well-balanced game. and we, we can run the ball, we can throw the ball. Um, but it, again, like you said, the, the cold uh, contributes to a much more stronger running attack. Um, but we're still going to attempt to throw as often as we can. With that being said, it should be a great matchup between two great teams tonight, battling out for the ultimate prize. I'll now send it to my co-host, Evan Samoylov, as he has some more on Elmwood Giants. Evan? Thanks, Graham. Elmwood is coming into tonight's match with one of the division's top offenses, scoring 259 points in seven games. Elmwood defeated Fort Francis in the semifinals in a thrilling game, defeating them 31-30 to advance to this championship game. One of the players to watch for in tonight's match is number 34, Evan Melville, who is one of the most dynamic offensive players in the league, scoring a total of 132 points. That contributed to more than 50% of Elmwood's total offensive points. I was able to catch up with the head coach, Matthew Fox, on his thoughts for tonight's match. I am here with the head coach of the Elmwood Giants, Coach Fox. Coach, first off, how excited are you and your team to be playing in the championship? Oh, our, our team is uh, pretty pumped. Uh, this is a big thing for the guys. Uh, they've been fighting hard all year, and to uh, end the season off in the championship game, that's uh, really exciting for them. We heard how, uh, how your team faced a lot of adversity over the last couple years. Uh, what have you seen that's been a lot different from your team this year than in the past? Uh, this year they just they learn from adversity when you get knocked down like how are you going to get back up and they, we got back up this year fought hard we've had a few games when we've been down and just uh, going through that adversity in the past has uh, like they've learned those lessons and helped us come back uh, what are you hoping to improve on for the final game coming up uh, we just need to uh, play our game, uh, limit the mistakes. Uh, our last game in the semifinal, we made a few mental errors, uh, let uh, Fort Francis get back into the game. So we're hoping to limit those uh, and just play our game. This will be a very exciting matchup as both of these teams finish tied for first place in their division with six wins and one losses to the record. I will now throw you back upstairs to our broadcast booth with Brian Cameron and Greg Kiesman. Take it away, guys. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and, and welcome to our uh, 7.30 presentation of the Winnipeg High School Football League's uh, Division Three Championship between St. John's Tigers and the Elmwood Giants. Uh, my name is Brian Cameron and I'm with my uh, friend and colleague Greg Kiesman and we are going to call a game for you tonight. Just want to let you know that we are uh, broadcasting live from the Investors Group Field here in Winnipeg. Temperature is minus 9. Welcome to Winnipeg. And uh, a little bit of a light snow outside, so that's the conditions we're going to be playing in tonight. Love 
Canadians bowl game versus uh, St. John's Tigers versus Elmo Giants, Greg. And looking forward to uh, a great night of football. Saw a game earlier just uh, tonight, the JV uh, football final between Vincent Massey and uh, Grant Park. Ended in a 39 to nothing win for Vincent Massey, and we're looking for some more great football tonight. Yeah, it's a it's a great opportunity for these two teams. St. John's and both Elm and Elmwood are both North End schools. Uh, it's awesome that they're out here tonight competing. Uh, the field conditions are a little bit rough, but uh, looking for a great game. In week two, Elmwood beat St. John's 45 to 28. And uh, both of them, both teams had a six and one record in the Curry division in the Winnipeg High School Football League Conference. Um, to get here, Elmwood defeated Fort Francis 31 to 30, and St. John's defeated Churchill 11 to seven. So I'm looking for a great game tonight between these two. And, Again, going back to week two, 45 to 28, over 60 points scored that night. So hopefully we're, uh, we're in for a great entertaining football game here. So Elmwood will be kicking off to St. James to start off with, going from uh, our screens right to left, uh, no, uh, south to north. And the ball is fielded by number 17 for St. We'll find, beat one tackle, move upside, and eventually be brought down at about the, appears to be able to 35, 40 yard line. Trent Raven had a, a little bit of a bobble there for the kickoff, but he turned some, got, was able to get some yardage, positive yardage out of that kick return. So first and tackle 10 on the for play by number Jones. 81, Emmanuel Amarilli. And of course, uh, like we usually do, Greg, we're going to apologize ahead of time for some of the names that we are going to be using tonight. And hopefully we'll, we'll try to do the best that we can to pronounce them. But if we do, we, it's no offense intended and we apologize. But and so St. John's will take over first and 10 in the shotgun. And first play will be a handoff, but tackled right away in the, in the backfield. Getting in almost no room is number one, Jacob Mapoyo. Number 53, Hampshire, was able to uh, burst upfield and make a great play on that uh, first down run play by St. John's. Sure wasn't fooling him to start off this game, so a great start for the Elmwood Giant defense. will pin the uh, back and make it second and 15 on their own 29-yard line. So Miles Kakawash will roll out to his right, complete to number 88. Gets up just beyond the original line of scrimmage. Complete on the play by Jaron Yakamishin. Looks like Kis Kisimba uh, made the great tackle on that play to, to limit the gain there, making it a, a third down and about eight yards to go. So looking at some of the stats here, Brian, uh, from this from this year, uh, uh, Elmwood has a fantastic uh, ball carrier in, in last name's Melville. Uh, he had 1,420, carry, 1420 yards rushing and 21 touchdowns. So we'll get our first look at him coming up once uh, Elmwood has the ball here. Fantastic kick on the play by number 25 from uh, Asher Wood. 
from the St. John's uh, uh, Tigers booted the ball well over the head of the Elmwood receivers. Okay, or returners, pardon me. And, uh, actually caught me off guard. I was amazed at how well he did. So a, a great punt, and that will put the uh, Elmwood Giants for their first offense at their own 25-yard line. So starting under is number eight, Logan Clays, who will shake off the first tackle. Run on the play by number 36 from uh, Aaron Kasimba. Tackled on the play by number 35. You know, in these uh, field conditions, Brian, as we saw earlier at the earlier game today, uh, uh, whoever dominates the offensive line and defensive line for either team will obviously have an advantage during this game today because the field conditions are quite slippery. Second and nine, trying to find a little bit more room, but covered almost right away. Run by number 34 by Elmwood. That would be Elvin, um, sorry, Evan Melville. Yeah, so Melville will be the key back that St. John's has to stop. Uh, Melville had 1,420 yards and 21 touchdowns. So you know that Coach uh, Grant McM uh, McMillan has uh, queued up his uh, Tigers to make sure that they're ready for, uh, for a lot of... Uh, Elmwood run here. So they will be, as a result of a third and nine, will be punting. Flag up on the play. Field on the play by number 25, Asher Wood. Tackled pretty soon after he caught the ball. Flag on the play, and we'll see what that's about. Uh, nope, just... First down. So procedure call by Elmwood, and it looks like that's been declined. St. John's will take over first and 10 from the Elmwood 41 yard line. That's a procedure. The right, uh, right tight end put his hand down on the ground and lifted up again. So unfortunately for St. John's, they're going to have uh, first and 15 here. So that will push it back to the 46-yard line. St. John's number 87. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And as a result of the penalty, it will be first and 15 for St. John's. Miles will hand off the ball to caught inside, but again, hit on the play right away. Taken on the play by number one, Jacob Mapoyo. Tackled on the play by number 36, Aaron Kasimba. Boy, not much room there, Brian, to run. Read that one well and picked up on it right away, so not much room there at all. So second and 15, back to the uh, line of scrimmage. The Tigers quarterback, Miles. Kekawash had 706 yards passing and uh, 13 TDs, so he, he'll They'll throw the ball here tonight. And he is doing that now, so he's back in the shotgun, and he will unload and looking for Pasher Wood. Intercepted on the play. Flag down, though. We, I'm wondering if we'll see a pass interference call. I, I, they, it might be offensive pass interference. The receiver did push off here. We'll see what the referees are going to call here. So we're waiting for the call. It is pass interference against Elmwood. Pass interference against Defense Elmwood. So that will give St. John's Elmwood, a first down. Number 82. So in amateur football rules, it's a 15-yard penalty. It's not where the point of infraction was. It's only a 15-yard penalty. So it'll be first down St. John's. 15 yards being about where he caught the ball anyway. So not that far off from what it would have been in, in another league's set of rules, I suppose. Now. 
you can use me if you have So St. John's is going with six receivers in empty backfield. And from the shotgun, he looks to his left, finds an open receiver, number 17, who will cut inside, but tackled from behind on the play. Trent Raven tackled on the play by number 65, Graham Sousa. So St. John's leading receiver was Asher Wood, who had 19 catches for 427 yards and eight touchdowns. So we'll be looking for uh, Asher Woods to, to be a main target tonight. And off inside and find, will find and bust a couple of tackles. Should have more than enough for the first down. And that would be number one again, Jacob Mapoyo, tackled on the play by number seven, Christian Block. Assisted on the play by number 32, Antonio Calder. That was a great push and support by the old line, just giving uh, behind the, the ball carrier there and giving a couple extra yards. Kick wash under center. He will hand off and find lot in number. Run by number, uh, appears to be number 27, Devin Schindel. Tackled on the play by number 55, Sheldon Babo. I like how St. John's has been mixing up pass and run here. They're keeping Elmwood's defense off, off balance a little bit here. And we got a little bit of snow coming down, Brian. We got snow again. So, uh, from under center, two receivers left, two receivers right. We'll throw out to his right, pass to Asher Wood. We'll push it in and push it inside for the touchdown. And St. John's takes the lead in the Division Three Winnipeg High School Football League Championship. And we'll open the scoring with 5:51 left in the first quarter. So one of his favorite targets, Greg Asher Wood, opens up the scoring for St. John's. Perfect timing to mention Asher Wood. He uh, certainly is a main target for tonight, and I expect to see big things out of him. I'm going my focus as I go. And that was a great throw, too. Yeah, that's a big target at 6'3", 175. I'm sorry, I didn't even start off the with this. I only need to see the quarterback. Watch us. I'm going to follow the ball as he kicks it. So putting the point up is, again, Asher Wood. He's highly involved in this team. So good for St. John's and, and Coach uh, McMillan uh, off to a great start here at, with 5.51 left in the first quarter. They're able to strike first. And you know what they say, Brian, is the team that scores first is often the team that wins. So we'll have to see that, see how that comes to play. Well, with 5.51 left, or just over half of our first quarter done, the snow has decided to make another appearance. Just after they clean the field, Brian, of course, the snow's got to come down. Of course, the, the snow's got to make another appearance. Welcome to Winnipeg. Football in November. So as St. John's gets ready to kick off, Asher Wood once again, right? Gets ready, but we got some kind of a play. They're they're getting the uh, St. John's Tigers to back off a bit. I they might have might have put it the ball down on the wrong yard line because it's hard to see the line. It is hard to see, and I think that's all it is. I uh, just want our camera is picking up the Elmwood head coach here, who's uh, you know probably played a little bit of O line in his time and is only wearing a short sleeve shirt out here, and it's minus nine. So, gotta love football in Canada. Oh, short and a kick. short kick. Knocked down on the play and then recovered by St. John's. Now there's a statement to start off this game, Greg. Number 55 from St. John's recovers the football. Nick w Wacos. I, I got to believe that Elmwood was not expecting that. I sure, I, I know that I wasn't. You know what, what a gutsy call by Coach McMillan to, to do a short kick there. Great call. Obviously, because it worked out. Uh, you know, it's awesome too, Brian, is I see a lot of orange fans across the stadium here, so it's good to see a lot of St. John's Five. supporters out here. And, and, you know, just over six minutes into the first quarter, and we got some 
Some, a little trickery right off the bat. Kickman heads it, grabbed by number one again, uh, Mapoyo. He Pretty might get a yard or two on it. Very basic play, just the two running backs cross and they give it to the second back there. Uh, obviously, Elmwood is, uh, has some good size up front on their D-line and they didn't give up a lot of yardage there. So that will make it second and eight from the Elmwood 39-yard line. This time, Hickman in the shotgun and he will roll back. It's in all, intercepted oh. on the play by number seven from Elmwood who read the play really well. Christian Block come up and it stepped in front of it, the intended receiver. The intended receiver was number 87, uh, Ryu Forsyth. So a great read by Christian Block will give them with the ball back at about their own 40 yard line. Here's a replay of that. I, I don't think that was a, a good decision by the quarterback to throw that. That was double cover there. I don't think the receiver is open. Critical turnover. So number eight, Logan Plays, will start underneath center with two backs behind him. And handoff, run by number 34, but he's met immediately. Evan Melville, tackled on the play by number 36. Uh, pardon me, number 38, Jericho Loria. I like Elmwood's patience here. They're not, they're not panicking. They're not all of a sudden changing their game plan. They have a game plan to come out and run the ball, and they're going to stick to it. Just be patient and, and uh, wear down that uh, St. John's defense. Logan Lays continues under center. Hands off in a bit of reverse and finds a bit of room, but tackled yeah. well behind the line of scrimmage. Grouch, number 36, doesn't find much room in there. Aaron Kasimba, tackled on the play by number 88, Jaron Yakamishin. Good job by the St. John's corner to come up and make that tackle. I'm going to be honest with you, Brian, a lot of corners don't want to stick their noses in and make those tackles. So great job by the corner there. Looks like St. John's going to end up to end up punting here. Elmwood. Sorry, El Elmwood. Kind of a high punt, but got it away. Okay, fielded by Asher Woods, who fumbles on the play and recovered by Elmwood, it appears. And it is Elmwood football who will take it over at about their own 50 yard line. It was a good attempt by the St. John's returner to catch it on the fly, but again, with the cold conditions, uh, you know, maybe the ball just squirted out. Well, let's see if Elmwood can do something with this one and, and maybe move the ball down the field and score. Three minutes and 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Logan Clay stars under center with a tight. Everybody up on the line. Yeah, tight formation there. Pushes it to the right and find a bit of running room, but fumbled again and recovered. Oh, recovered again by Elmwood. Looks Almost like picked up on the play by number 38 from, uh, uh, pardon me, from Jericho Loria from uh, St. John, but. It, again, no, Brian, that uh, uh, ball is just squirting out all over the place here. So uh, we, we're going to probably see a lot of turnovers with that cold, wet, damp conditions out there uh, tonight. As we see more snow coming down, uh, you got to believe that uh, we could probably see more of that as the game goes along. Gotta so, love football. So Logan Clays continues with this tight formation, two backs behind him and his receivers up close. And he will hand off again into the same side right, the right side and moves it up and gets about five yards on the play. Again, is number 34. Uh, once again, Evan Melville. Evan Melville Gain reminds five me. Yards. Evan Melville just reminds me of a little ball of hate. He's just gonna run right into you, right over you. So second and six, and they will continue with this tight formation. Again, running to the right side and tackled and will get close to the first down, about a yard short it appears. Continuing with Evan Melville running the ball. 
Tackled on the play by number 30, pardon me. It is third and about a yard, yard and a half, and it looks like Elmwood would go for it, will go for it. Continuing with this tight formation, two, two blocks on the right side. And once again, move is a little bit more up the middle this time. Should be enough for the first down. So first down, Elmwood, as they get about three, four yards on the play, enough to uh, keep the chains moving. Well, I certainly see the Elmwood offensive line making a statement here. Three plays in a row to the left-hand side. They are certainly a force to be reckoned with here. So what are you seeing by having this tight formation, uh, Greg? What, well, what are it, they hoping to do? This is just going to be smash mode football. It's going to be man versus man, and, and who's going to be pushed back here? So Logan pitches this time going to the left and finding some room is Elvin Melville who will get about eight, nine yards on the play. Tackle on the play by number 38, Jericho Loria. Great vision by uh, Melville there to, to read when to cut back and cut back in and, and uh, make uh, about nine yard gain on that play. Run again by number 34, Evan Melville, who should have enough for a first down. Well, that, that's going to end the first quarter here, Brian. So after uh, one quarter of football in the Division Three Canada Inns Bowl, Winnipeg High School Football League Championship from uh, Investors Group Field, St. John's is up seven to nothing, but Elmwood is marching, so we'll reverse ends. But I got to tell you, I just looked at some of these stats here, and it shouldn't surprise me, but 156 carries, 1,421 yards in the regular season for Evan Melville. Yeah. There'll be a lot of him tonight. We'll see him a lot. Um, again, Asher Wood for St. John's. We'll, we'll see him care, uh, make a lot of catches. Uh, Kekowicz, the quarterback from St. John's, we'll see him throw the ball quite a bit. And 21 touchdowns. 21 touchdowns for uh, Elvin Melville this year, so you gotta, we got to believe we will see him a lot, and I wouldn't surprise to even take it right to the end zone in this case. It, I mean, it's been working. They've been able to move the ball. Keep, keep doing that smash mouth football, as you're saying. That's right. Smash mouth football. It's going uh, it's it's to be a great se uh, second quarter here. We're looking forward to this. Well, and they continue to, to line up in that uh, clear pattern. I mean, that line, that uh, power to the right side, and they continue to do that, and and you know what? They're having a tough time. Run by 34 and tackled on the play by number 25, Asher Wood. They're just running left on on the a gap, the the center guard hole here, and and great push again by the Elmwood uh, offensive line just to get upfield and push those guys back. And uh, running backs are just you know you could just almost drive a truck through that. Well, I got, and I got to believe it. That we, you know we're not able to keep track of some of the stats here, but if we saw stats, I'll bet you he's got to have 60 yards at least already. So again to Melville, who will find some room to the left side and will push it all the way in for a touchdown. And Elmwood has tied the game and a flag up on the play. Right. After the fact, by I'm looking here number. It looks like number 34. Um, from uh, Dylan Bowman from defensive end from St. John's. We'll see it on the replay here. Yeah, you're right, Brian, it was number 34. Yeah, not uh, not really necessary once the uh, touchdown scored to, you know, to, to tackle the players, but especially in a manner like that. Yeah, so that penalty will be applied on the kickoff. So Elmwood will try to make it a, a seven all game by kicking the convert. After the play, unnecessary roughness, St. John's number 34. That penalty will be applied on the kickoff, touchdown. So the kick will go up by number seven, Christian Block. It's up. And it is good. So the game is tied after 
Uh, with 11 minutes and four seconds left in the second quarter, the Elmwood Giants have tied the Division Three final at seven all. Well, Brian, with a uh, break in play here with the injury player down, uh, you know, I'm just really impressed with the St. John's quarterback, Kekawash, and, and uh, uh, receiver Asher Wood. And for Elmwood, I'm, I'm very impressed with their offensive line in Melville. I'm, this is going to be a great night of football here at uh, Investors Group Field. Well, and, and I'm watching, if you go down, we're looking down the list here, we haven't seen yet uh, Jacoby and O'Connor, uh, but also listed for Elmwood, uh, 42 carries himself for 500 yards. So, you know, it sounds like they have a pretty good one-two punch that they can use uh, to move the ball on the ground throughout the, throughout the game. You know, that's almost 2,000 yards just between the two of them, Greg. Very impressive. So we're going to see which is going to win tonight, the passing game or the running game. So with the penalty, Elmwood will be cooking up, kicking off from midfield. And of course, with uh, the snow and it's it is making a bit of a difficult to uh, see the lines on the field so we're waiting to make sure everything gets lined up okay the ball is up and fielded at about the 15 yard line returned by Asher Wood number 25 who will push and push and get up to about to me it looks like about the 37 yard line good uh, uh, catch and run from Asher Wood Tackled on the play by number 56, Ethan Stuckey. So trying a direct snap to number one, Napoyo, who will push. That kid would not go down. And a great push and run by Mapoyo. Now, I, I, he only gets about halfway down, but I'll tell you, he worked hard for the yards he did get. I don't know if we'll get uh, the instant replay. Here we'll watch the instant replay here. Look at that. Be the hammer, not the nail. So that'll make it second and four from the 38-yard line. Cake wash under center. Receivers on both sides. And we'll throw it out under the screen. Caught on the play by number 25, Asher Wood, who just refuses to go down and gets close to the first down yard marker. Nice little hitch uh, pass out to Asher Wood there to almost get him first. Oh, it looks like they're giving him the first down. Nice, nicely executed play. Second, first and ten. Maboyo catch, but caught in the backfield right for a loss. Read that play quite well. Is from Elmwood. Sorry, just trying to get a number here. Number 35 from Elmwood. Jacobian O'Connor. Sorry, folks. Sometimes with all the snow coming down, we have a bit of a tough time reading the numbers. Excellent uh, job by O'Connor there to come up and, and make a play on that. Caught from behind. So a loss of three on the play, second and 13. Luke Washington, the shotgun, and he will look to and roll to his left. Looking, he's, he's telling me, I'm looking downfield for you, number 88. But overhead, Nicholas Ariagata, defended on the play by number 36 from, uh, um, uh, pardon me, sorry, number 88, Jaron Yakamishin and defended on the play by number 36, Aaron Kisimba. But uh, flag on the play, so we will see what the call is. That penalty is declined, third down. Holding in the penalty is declined, so that makes it third and uh, 13. 
You know, Brian, one of the hard things to do is to teach a quarterback how to throw on the run, and he's ro rolling left, which is also harder to do. So good job by Cake Watch. Um, wasn't exactly a, uh, the, the throw wasn't exactly on target, but it was a good job to, to evade the pressure. So punting on the play by Asher Wood, who will put the ball up and go to his left, and it looks like it will roll about, out of bounds at about the 50-yard line of Elmwood, so they'll take over from their own side with eight minutes and 36 seconds left in the second quarter. Score tied at seven all. And we have a great football game going here, Greg. You know, at the WHSFL, Winnipeg High School Football League has uh, uh, more teams than the NFL and CFL combined. And, and it's just, football just seems to be a booming sport here in Winnipeg and, and surrounding Manitoba areas and, and uh, Kenora and Dryden and Fort Francis. So from under center, Logan Clay starts off. This time he does not have a stack and he will pitch out to his left and Evan. Nice Evan. job for, for St. John's to come up and stuff that play, uh, giving them no gain. Uh, good flow from the St. John's defense, just or angle pursuits as well to, to limit that gain. So uh, a gain of about two. Second and eight from their 46 yard line. Logan plays, continues to ride right under center and will pitch again to, to Melville. About a three or four yard gain on the play. So third and five, and it does appear that Elmwood will punt the ball away. Ball is up. And fielded on the play by Asher Wood. Flag on the play, more than likely no yards. Great job by Asher Wood to uh, catch the ball in the air. So he got about a 15 yard gain and, and uh, penalty, flat, penalty uh, for no yards included. So that should add about 15 yards more on it. So we're waiting for the call. No yards, Elmwood. That penalty is declined. First down. Well, it appears that the uh, that Asher Wood was able to get more than the 15 yards would have got them, so they will take it over from the 47 yard line. Okay, quick back in, in the, and we'll throw downfield it. Oh, through the hand, and flag on the play, intended for number five, 25, Asher Wood, but a flag on the play, and I'm pretty sure we're going to see a pass interference call here. Yeah, the DB had too good a coverage, or too tight a coverage on that one, just a, was just a little early in, in his uh, attempt to knock down the ball. Good blocking in the front by uh, the uh, um, offensive line. Offensive line from St. John's to give uh, Kickwash some good time to throw the ball. So that will keep the ball moving for St. John's. Six minutes and 40 seconds left in the second quarter. Cake Wash will continue to work with the, shot, with the shotgun. One back beside him, one receiver wide on each side. Hand it off inside to McCoy again, who will fight and fight and fight and get about three, four yards on the play. Tackled on the play by number seven, Christian Block. Wow, watch his watching him, he doesn't stop his legs pumping, Brian. Great individual effort by that running back. So second and five. This time under center with two backs. 
Throwing it in behind, but caught by his receiver, number 87, who will be tackled for a loss. About a three yard loss, so number 87 from St. John's, Ryu Forsyth. Um, I just want to highlight here, we're gonna use the uh, Telestrator here. I just want to illustrate that there's gonna be a great catch, one arm catch here. And I want to illustrate as well that this is actually gonna be a lateral. If he wouldn't have caught that, that would have been a live ball. Let it roll. So Asher Wood will hold the ball and fake out to his right and then throw down to a wide open receiver, number 87, who will be tackled and brought outside of the play by number 81 from Elmwood. Emmanuel Amarilli tackles on the play, but number 87, Ryu Forsyth, continues the ball moving and a great unexpected trick play for St. John's. Uh, Keeps the ball going in, in, in their possession, Greg. A little bit of hocus pocus on uh, St. John's side here. We're going to uh, basically, Asher Wood had a two option uh, play there where he could either run it or pass it. And he's got a pretty good little arm uh, to throw that downfield to the receiver. Two, actually, two wide open receivers were beside each other. So either one of them could have taken it. So first and 10 from the Elmwood 25 yard line. Take Wash in the shotgun, and he will roll to his left. And he finds an open receiver again. 87 will be caught and tackled. And brought down on the play by number 81, Emmanuel Amaliri. Forsyth with the catch there. I'm, I'm very impressed with this kid's hands. Uh, a couple plays ago, he made a one arm or one handed catch. And uh, now this one, he's beautiful catch and run out of uh, uh, to get a first down. Certainly in the red zone here. So first and 10 from the 10 yard line, essentially first and goal. And the ball's a little high for Cakewash, but he manages it and then throws it up to an, oh, oh almost intercepted in the end zone. Intended for number 17. Cakewash just took a hellacious hit. Holy. But he's up and walking. He is. So intended for Trent Raven. So that will make it second and 10. Great pressure by Elmwood on that play. Elmwood's digging their heels in here. They don't want to give up a touchdown. Score 7-7 seven, seven with 3.40 left in the second quarter. So cake wash in the shotgun and receivers on wide on both sides of him. And he will roll and throw it out to his right side, but ahead of his intended receiver, number 88, Jaron Yakimishan. Yeah, ball was just slightly thrown behind the receiver. Too bad for that, because he was actually had, if he would have been thrown in front of him, he would have caught it and maybe would have scored for St. John's. But good job on Elmwood to uh, uh, be able to dig their uh, heels in and, and possibly just give up a field goal here. But again, with the way Elm, uh, St. John's is playing, you never know, they might run a, a fake here. So Asher Wood, who seems to do everything for St. John's. Mr. Everything. We'll put the four on, almost blocked. And it's good. And it's good. So that puts up uh, St. John's up 10 to seven with 3.05 left in the second quarter. Division three, Winnipeg High School Football League Championship, the Canada Inns Bowl from Investors Group Field, folks. And well, thanks again for joining us. Let me tell you, Brian, these kids are putting it all on, leaving it all on the field. We are seeing some great football here. It's been a fun game to watch so far. Hard hitting, great execution. Wonderful football going and, on tonight here at Investors Group. And, and you did say a while ago that sometimes whoever scores first seems to win the game, but you know, I'm almost getting the impression whoever has the ball last is gonna score, the, uh, win this game. That could be very true. Well, we've got a full half to go yet, but so we've seen some great football already. Both offenses are able to move the ball effectively. It's not like the defense is playing bad, it's just offense is making some great plays. Yeah, the defense has made their plays too. So they will, uh, Elmwood has option to take the ball first and 10 from their own 35. Going back into that bunch formation. This time it seems a little more balanced though, Greg. 
Run by 34 Melville, but he's met pretty quickly. Now I gotta believe that St. John's has really been keen on uh, watching for him, practicing probably getting ready for him all week. There was a flag on the place, so we're waiting for the call. Oh, pardon me, that was the three minute warning. What a fast half, exciting. So second and 10 from their own 35 yard line. Logan plays under center. That bunch formation that seems to be balanced to this side. Nova will find some room and a little forearm straight arm to make some room for himself to get the first down. Great run by Evan Melville. See if we can catch that straight arm break. So, so that will make it first and 10 now from their own 45 yard line. So I'm just gonna illustrate here that we're gonna, uh, you're gonna see a nice little straight arm here coming out of Melville out of his left hand here, so let it roll. Great job by Melville to not allow that guy to come in and make that tackle. He will continue to walk. He will continue to follow his blockers and get about four or five yards on the play. Tackled on the play by number 38 from St. John's, Jericho Loria. Well, second down at five, Brian, do you go to the pass game or do you continue to give it to Melville and ram it down their throats? Well, I think you just continue to go with what's working. This is a championship game. Pass outside to number 80. He will find some room down the left side. And tackled outside. Now, I don't know if you noticed this time, but that time, but underneath center, quarterback was actually number seven. Christian Block. All right, we're gonna roll this. Watch number 88 here. He's just gonna roll. He's coming across the field. He's gonna roll out and just do a, a simple five yard out. Let it roll. And it looks like we've got Christian Block quarterbacking right now. And we've got three receivers lined up on each side of him. And he will look into the middle and caught on the play by number 88 from Elwood. Great catch by Nicholas Arigata, Arigata. I am so surprised, Brian, that they've abandoned the run here and gone to the throw to, to the passing game, but it's working for them. Well, it, it appears that they have also, in the process, switched quarterbacks because Christian Block is lining up under center, and Logan Clays is actually behind him. Oh. <laughs> Ran on the play by number 35, Jacobian O'Connor. Tackled by Ash. No, didn't get much that game. time. In fact, a bit of a uh, loss, about two yards. Right there. All right, I'm just going to illustrate. This is the player here that we want to watch. He comes up and just jams the running back right there. Let it roll. So number seven on the play, Kristen Block rolls up Brent to the outside Raven. to his left, but there's no nothing game. there for him. Great pursuit from the St. John's front line and uh, tackled in for another loss. And in fact, a, a, a big loss, which will put it at about 14-15. So I gotta believe that Elmwood's more than likely gonna be punting here. And the snow continues to come down, Greg. That's a, that's a tough play, Brian, because that's called a naked boot, where the quarterback really has no blockers or anybody on his side. So you're really trying to deceive the defense there, and, and great job by St. John's not to uh, not to let him outside and make the tackle on that. 
So Elmwood is taking a timeout as I think they're trying to figure out what or decide what they're going to do, whether they're going to punt or actually try to go for it. But, um, you know, given that that's such a long field ahead of them still, I think that the best option would be for them to punt the ball away. Well, there's 18 seconds left, Brian, and, and uh, Fair enough. not a lot of time here for any, any uh, more than about two plays. So, you know, if they're able to get one more play and make it a big play, you never know, maybe get a pass interference or something along those lines, um, and still have a little bit of time on the clock to run another play or either kick or try to kick a field goal. Pretty difficult conditions here to try to kick in, in with any distance. It's not very windy, but it's just swirling conditions here. So as you said, as Greg said, 18 seconds left. And it does appear, yes, Elmwood is going to go for it. Christian Block under center, and he will draw back flag on the play, and he will throw it up to the sidelines, but over the head of his intended receivers. Intended is number 81, Emmanuel Amaliri. Probably markers are down, probably indicating either offside or procedure. So they're calling St. John's for offside here, so uh, Elmwood will get another shot at uh, another play here. And with 12 seconds left. Grenades third down. Well, I'm going to look for uh, Elmwood to put the ball up deep here and, and hopefully, uh, for their sake, get a touchdown or make a big play. So, 12 seconds left. Third and 11. And Christian Block go back and he will find his attendant receiver, but tackled almost right away, covered quite well in the play by number 18 from St. John's, uh, Micah Humberstone. Toss to him to play to number 88, Nicholas Ariagata. Now that's six seconds left on the clock, and that will be a turnover. So St. John's will take over first and 10 from about their own 35 yard line with six seconds left in the half. A little surprised at the choice of throw on that one. I would have thrown it down the field, try to get it into the end zone or closer to the end zone, throwing a, a five yard out when you need you know, 12 or 13 yards for first down, even. Not going to work. So Elmwood's back, got uh, two guys deep here, a little bit of a prevent defense. Wonder what St. John's will do here. So it takes a knee, that only takes two seconds off the clock. One more knee and that will bring to the and, end of the quarter. And this should bring to the end of the quarter as there's no time left on the clock. So. We are going to be trying to arrange an interview right now, and if we can bring up some highlights, we're going to uh, show you a few of uh, some of the great plays that we've seen in the first half of a very exciting football game. St. John's Tigers up over top of the Elmwood Giants, 10 to 7. Uh, the snow is coming down. It's Winnipeg football in November, Greg. Start up the snow blowers. Start them up. And that's Get your shovels out. That's what they're doing. So make sure. We're gonna we're gonna throw it quickly to commercials.
The Louis Rial Arts and Technology Center's hairstyling course prepares future hairstylists for an abundance of career opportunities in this expanding industry. Students begin by learning the practical aspects of the course in the classroom, then later move their skills to hands-on work in a state-of-the-art facility using current techniques, tools, and equipment. In the salon, they will work with clients in a real job setting and gain experience in barbering, hair coloring, cutting, styling, and business skills. So we have a full service salon here at ATC with every um, tool and equipment you would find in a regular salon. So each student has a station fully equipped with a hair dryer, a flat iron and two curling irons and they also have their hydraulic chair and trolley with every uh, roller or rod or clip they need for um, the services that we provide. The accredited training at ATC provides students with many industry opportunities. I like that school is fun. <laughs> we do fun things. Um, I like how on, we have client days, so some days I actually feel like I'm more so in my work life as opposed to school all the time. Um, we've been learning a lot on highlights and all of the new techniques like balayage and ombre and stuff like that. I have been in two events so far. One is the Canadian Skill and it was last year and we participated as a part one and uh, also we had to do a photo shoot in a, in a model so I participated on that. It was a great experience. So far I had three uh, instructors and they are very knowledgeable, they have a lot of experience and they have a lot of patience. <laughs> Those who complete the 12 credit course will graduate with their hairstyling certificate. To learn more about the hairstyling program visit lratc.ca or call us at 204-237-8951. Do you want a rewarding career where the work is varied and there's never a dull moment? Imagine yourself using the latest diagnostic scan tools, repair computer software, and the newest tools and equipment while learning to diagnose and repair vehicles. ATC's Automotive Technology Program is your first step. Students at ATC learn the various systems on a vehicle. They learn the fundamentals of braking systems, steering and suspension, drive lines, and we do that in theory in a classroom. We do that in a lab, which is a more controlled environment where we can apply some of those concepts, and then in a live shop environment. ATC has a fully equipped 12-bay shop as well as a lab and a classroom. Our facility is equipped with the latest in diagnostic software and equipment. Our tools and equipment in our shop are similar to what you find in industry. One of the things that's unique to ATC is the amount of time that students spend in our programs and as a result it's sort of a very collaborative environment and teachers and students learn to work together. Students at ATC finish the program with a four-week work practicum where they get to apply the concepts that they've learned here in a real work environment. Students who successfully complete our program go on to work in dealerships, independent repair facilities um, and they're not limited to just that. Some of them take those skills and transfer them into heavy duty, um, highway trucks and that kind of stuff as well. So if you have a passion for car and you want to work in a fast-paced, cutting-edge industry, this is the place for you. I've been into baking ever since I was a little kid and got my first Easy Bake Oven and I did a lot of baking with my grandma. So growing up I really liked to be involved with food and since I'm a very creative person but I can't draw, I decided to put my artistic abilities into baking and creating artistic and visual desserts. Um, what makes me passionate about baking pastry is it gets me to 
um, explore my creativity in um, decorating cakes and also with the science aspect of like the baking part of like the breads and also danishes and other products that we make here. Uh, I chose ATC because it is a school that really cares about focusing on the students. The ATC got my attention when I was looking at the different activities that they offer and they, it says on the curriculum that it's very hands-on. We're a smaller school and generally we have smaller classes so it is a, a better ratio one-on-one -on -one with the teacher and we work in a team environment with a practical setting so the students Students get a lot of opportunity to work in an actual bakery. I've learned how to expand on my creativity, how to do plated desserts as well as inventive cakes. What I like about the instructors is that they're very caring and when they know that you need help, they're always there to support you in learning. of the program range. Uh, everything from quick breads to cupcakes and then more elaborate cakes as well. And we also have basic breads we start with. And then we go into our artesian breads. We also dabble in a little bit of sugar work and chocolate work too. As we have more time in like the laboratory, we get to apply those theories that we learn in the class and we get to learn from our mistakes. I really like the, uh, the chance to come here every day and learn something new as well as being able to do the thing that I love most. I became more passionate about it because I learned a lot of things in the program. The Culinary Arts Program at the Louis Riel Arts and Technology Center is an experience like no other. The course will expose you to all introductory aspects of the food service industry. You'll have the chance to plan and prepare meals, cook meats and poultry, prepare salads and vegetables, as well as acquiring the skills and techniques to hone you into the chef you want to be. You get to work in an environment that greatly resembles the food service industry. With tools and equipment that match industry standard, you'll have the best experience possible. You'll also have the opportunity to learn hands-on alongside certified chefs who are both as passionate and excited about the culinary arts as you are. Near the end of the program, ATC is sure to offer its students quality work experience to add to their resume. ADC's Culinary Arts Program is Level 1 accredited by Apprenticeship Manitoba, which means you'll be ready for whatever's your next step. If you're thinking about pursuing a career in the culinary arts, don't hesitate to visit LRADC.ca for more information or call 204-237-8951. I am down here with the head coach of the Elmwood Giants, Michael Fox. Coach, we see you down by three points to start the second half. What would you like to adjust uh, in the second half? Uh, well, basically, we just have to clean up a few mistakes. Uh, we had a few penalties there that took away some big plays, uh, gave the momentum back to them. We just got to clean that stuff up and play our game. Uh, we noticed that you're using your uh, running back, number 34, Evan Melville, lots. Uh, how do you think about his game so far? Uh, well, they scouted him well, and they're, you know, we've had a few, he's had a few runs where he's broken through, but uh, they're doing a good job on him. We just have to block well for him and uh, hopefully get him loose. Is the weather condition changing your game plan in any way? Uh, not really. We just, we wanted to run, and uh, this, this weather is better for the running game, so uh, not really, not really at all. Thank you for your time, Coach. Yeah, thank you.
That was the head coach of the Elmwood Giants, Michael Fox. We will now throw you back up to our. We will now go up to our broadcast booth with our play-by-play -play and color commentator Brian Cameron and and Greg Kiesman. Take it away, guys. Well, welcome back to the second half of the Division Three Winnipeg High School Football League game from Investors Group Field. I'm Brian Cameron, and I'm with Greg Kiesman as we continue to cover a, a really good football game. 10-7 to 7 for the St. John's Tigers over top of the uh, Elmwood Giants, but we got 24 minutes of football ahead of us, Greg, and I'm looking for some more great football. Yeah, I'm just reflecting back on that interview with Coach Fox, and I'm thinking, what do you need? I'm thinking he needs a coat. It's darn cold out oh, there, but you goodness. know what? you got to love it out here. He's yeah. wearing a short sleeve shirt, and he's uh, he's got his troops ready to go in the second half here. They're down by three points only, and if I'll tell you what. If you don't love football, it Friday night lights, you got snow coming down, you got a snow plow on the field, cleaning off the lines. How much better could it get? Thursday night football <laughs> in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, <laughs> brother, because that's what it's all about, and we are having fun. This has been a great game so far. So to start off the second half, we got St. John's kicking off to, uh, to Elmwood here. So... Just to recap, we know that Melville from uh, Elmwood is the, the key back here, and, and uh, he's had a great first half. I call him Little Ball of Hate because he's not very big, but boy, does he run hard. And so St. John's Art Asher Wood kicks off and through the hands of the returner and eventually picked up number 81. Almost uh, turned over on the play by number 81 from uh, Elmwood, though. And that's Emmanuel Amaliri. But they will take over. First and ten to start off the second half. Down ten to seven. And we continue to see snow falling here tonight. Now I I we were doing this last year at this time here, Greg, and I gotta tell you the conditions is as as, as as tough as they were, about minus minus nine, minus ten are still a lot better than what they were last year at this time. I think it was what, minus 15, minus 20? Minus 15, minus 20 with a wind chill. It was tough, so. But again, Winnipeg football in November, that's what we get. Number 34, Melville finds some room to the right side. And he eventually is tackled on the play by number 25. Who else? Number 25, Asher Wood. Great cover on the play, but a great run by Melville. Tackle on the play by Mr. Everything for St. John's, right? I mean, Melville had a great, uh, great hole there opened up by the old line. He was able to bust it wide to his right-hand side, pick up about 13, 14 yards. Great first uh, play for Elmwood. Establishing a run. Gets them up the field a bit to their own 47-yard line. I'm just trying to see. This. It looks like Logan Clays is back underneath center again. And yes, he is. He'll hand inside to the middle for number 34, who... He will fight and get about another three, four yards on it. Melville had about two or three guys that were on his back, and he's just trucking along, carrying them for and another Chase two or three Kaminsky more yards. Kaminsky make the stop for the Tigers. So that will make it second, and it looks like a actually looks into it's about five yards. So second and five. Very boisterous crowd out here tonight. Not huge numbers, but very boisterous. You know, Greg, I'm looking up, and there are more people standing on the concourse than there are in the seats, I think. But there, there are more people here, and it's a loud, boisterous crowd. And 34 continues, uh, Melville continues to fight. Ends up getting about three yards on the play, but St. John's is not having an easy time of bringing him down. Nick Winkos uh, from St. John's, 55. Uh, took his legs out, took uh, Melville's legs out at a at, uh, wonderful tackle on the play by uh, uh, Wacos. Limiting the gain to only about three. So Nick, third and two. Nick Wacos having 24 tackles in the regular season this year. <coughs> so Logan plays under center with two backs right behind him. Run by 30. But will try to go to a bit to his right side. Oh, it's going to be Tackled close. Tackled on the play by number 18. It will be close. St. John's is indicating they, uh, they stopped them. And it, from what I could see up here, they're yep. right. And yes, it is. So it is first down. St. John's turnover on downs for Elmwood. Oh, there's a, there's a huge boost for St. John's. So great tackle by St. John's from number 18, Micah Humberstone. So 
at the beginning of the broadcast we talked about both offenses and we didn't say that the defense is going to have a huge play tonight but that was that was a key play for uh, St. John's here. So they will take over first and down, first and ten. A run by number 37 from St. John. Sean Inglis. Tackled on the play by number 65, Graham Sousa. So that will make it second at about a nine, a gain of only about one, one yard. All right, so on this play, you're just going to see uh, a nice little uh, run up the gut by number 37 there, the first back through the hole. Take Wash in the shotgun, and he will look into the middle, and an open receiver at number 17, but caught short of the first down. Tackled on the play by number 33, Isaiah Bins. Good job by Cake Watch to find a wide open receiver. He had a guy streaking down the middle of the field deep, but he decides to go underneath to the wide open receiver. Good choice by Cake Watch. Isaiah Bins, 28 tackles in the regular season. So third and three, and Cake Watch will continue. He's Empty in the tackle. shotgun. Three receivers to his right, and he will keep it himself and run and find room up the middle. Fumble on the play. Picked up on the play by Elmwood, and they will take over on the fumble. Picked up by number 33. It appears to be Isaiah Benz again. So Elmwood would get the ball back. Well, we talked about it early, Brian. Uh, just just the fact that the, the conditions will make the ball a little bit greasy and it really kick wash had the first down. All he needed to do is either hook slide or, or just go down. But I guess he lowered his shoulder and, and tried to gain more yards. And that the ball just squirted out. So Logan plays under center and he's got a receivers all around him this time. And he will have handed it to Mr. Whoop. Reliable Melville, who is again a very difficult to bring down. And he's got a He's being gang tackled and eventually will get about two, three yards on the play. But again, uh, Greg, not having an easy time of bringing down Melville. I don't know if we'll get the replay on that one, but what a what a hit by the first initial contact by the running back and, and first tackler. Running back just blew back the tackler. The old saying, be the hammer, not the nail. So that actually a gain of about four or five yards, much more than it looked like from up here. So. That was all Melville. And and again, they have got uh, receivers all over. And, and surprise, Melville will find a lot of room up the middle, cutting towards his left side. And eventually tackled on the play by number 25, Asher Wood. And that will bring it up to about the 50 yard line. So I just of St. John's. And they're saying from the 45 yard line. So great run by Evan Melville. Logan plays under center and he will hand off but fake it. And this time going to a bit to the right side. Tack tackled on the play by number 38 from St. John's and that is Jericho Gloria. All right, so I just want to illustrate this play. It's a simple crossing play. First back goes through, second back comes underneath, and basically the O-line is going to cross up front here. So let go. You can see the effective blocking and run play here. Kick out block by the guard. Nice hole for uh, Melville to run through. Great job by uh, the Elmwood uh, uh, offensive line. And we have an injury on the play for Elmwood. That, cr that cross, uh, the cross um, run play seems to be the bread and butter for Elmwood here tonight. It, for whatever reason, St. John's has trouble just being able to uh, block or co cover up those holes. And on that uh, play, coming off the field is Evan Melville, and if they lose him, that's a big loss for Elmwood. He, he does appear to be limping slightly. So it'll be interesting to see if he's back in the game and he will go and sit down. We'll keep an eye on him from uh, from our point of view here. 
That'd be a huge loss for Elmwood if he doesn't return. So Logan plays, continues second and five, and he will hand off inside. A run on the play by number five, Jacob Jacobian O'Connor. Short of the first down. Looks like about three yards short. Looks like about a third and two here. I'm sure uh, Elmwood would wish uh, Melville was back in the game at this point. Finding room upside, it should have enough for the first down. It's going to be close. And I'm waiting for an indication from the refs. Taco to play, play by Nick Waco. And they are saying first it. down for Elmwood. And I'm looking and, and Evan Melville continues to be on the sidelines and he's walking up and down and I think he's trying to tell the coaches I'm ready to go, put me back in guys. Logan Clades comes up under center. And he will pitch out to his right. Taking on the play is number 37. The tackle on the play by, uh, for a big loss by number 38 from St. John's, Jericho Loria. And that is a big loss on the play. And in comes Mel Evan Melville again. So that will make it second, and it appears to be 18. All right, so second and about 18 here. I'm going to look for them to go to the air. They're going to go to their bunch formation. They're going to go to their bunch, so everything's tight up in the front line. But Clays will drop back and throw a pitch out and find 7 2. Christian Block, but a flag on the play. This is going to be roughing the passer against St. John's. It's going to be a first down. Yeah, run. and we've actually seen the indication already. It is a roughing the passer call, so. First down, Elmwood. Not a smart play by St. John's there because they would have stopped them. The ball was well thrown out of, already out of the hands of the uh, the quarterback. And uh, St. John's, I didn't catch the number. Of the Unnecessary John's roughness, roughing the quarterback. St. John's, number 30. 15 number yard 30. penalty from the end of the play. So, yeah, uh, Anderson, down. Nicholas Anderson. So, uh, ball was already gone and, and roughing the passer now puts. Uh, uh, Elmwood down into the red zone here. That was a big penalty. Uh, the, the half of St. John's gives Elmwood great field position. Down 10 to 7. 308 left in the second quarter. And who do they give it to but Melville who continues to run effectively. Well good job. Good job on Nicholas Anderson on the on the tackle. They're making up for that penalty he took. Gain of about a yard. So second and nine. Two thirty-eight left in the third quarter. Ten seven for St. John, so this is a huge, uh, huge series here. Plays under center, hands it to, hands it to Melville and Asher Woods. Asher Woods initially had him, but he snuck out of his grasp, but tackled after about another gain of about three or four more yards. O'Reilly Mercer make the stop. Raven McCable with the tackle and also assisted by Riley Mercer. So, so Elmwood will go for the points in the field goal. So one minute, 48 seconds left. If good, this would tie the game. Ball is up. 
off the crossbar. It is good, <laughs> off the crossbar and good, and it, so it is good, and that ties the game at 10. One minute, 39 seconds left in the second quarter, and we got a heck of a football game ahead of us still. Great kick, uh, great kick considering these conditions. 14 minutes left. The field must be very slippery right now, so I, I, good this, job. This has been a great, fun football game to watch, so. Stick around at the end of the game, folks, when they uh, present the uh, Canada's Bowl Championship trophy and banner to the winning team. We'll be covering that as well. And of course, come back and join us tomorrow night as we have, first of all, the Division II Championship at 5 o'clock, followed by the Division I Championship at 7.30. Back on LRSD TV, so find the, the games at LRSD.TV. At 5 o'clock, it's the CTV Bowl, and then at 7.30, the Yanovitz Bowl. Well, it kicks off, and it is fielded and goes out of bounds. Well, they're saying flag. it wasn't touched. And because it wasn't touched, flag on the play. I don't recall it being touched, so that makes sense. We'll have a first and ten on so the again, tomorrow at uh, 5 o'clock, we have Kelvin versus River East for the CTV Bowl, and followed at 7.30 with St. Paul's versus Vincent Massey. Now that's a replay from last year, Vincent Massey and St. Paul's. Brian, in the, in the uh, WHSFL Championship game. Look. Oh, Legal sorry, kickoff right. out of bounds, Elmwood. Ball will be placed at the 40, first down. But we have seen St. Paul's and Vincent Massey the year prior. I think that was two years ago, yeah. yeah. And earlier today we had Vincent Massey over... Grant Park. Grant Park in the JV championship game. The home run sports bowl. So St. John's will take over from their 40 yard line. So I'm not exactly sure what's happening here, but the referee is marching the ball back. Figured out. Okay, good from the shotgun. Take back and he will look to his left and he will throw it up. Looking for number 25, Asher Wood, but well over his head. Defended on the play by number 85, Tyson Amos. Good coverage on the play by Amos. Uh, it almost looked like Wood wasn't really respect or didn't anticipate that man-to-man -man coverage. He lit up a little bit on the ball. Let's go, team! That will make it second and ten from their 40-yard line. flag on the play. Now we don't have the benefit of a 20 second clock so I'm not sure if that's what the call is going to be here. So offside St. John's is the uh, Offside St. John's number 17. Five yard penalty. Second down. Receiver Trent Raven called for the offside. Coach Fox from Elmwood is getting his defense all fired up here. If they could uh, stop St. John's here, they might get the ball back in good field position. Big wash rules to his right. He's looking down the field and he throws it over his head. Intercepted on the play! Intended for number 88, Jaron Rakimishin, but caught on the play by number 7. Christian Block. What a great play by Block to come up and pick that ball up. 
I'm going to just, uh, you know, again, rolling a quarterback out in these field conditions, a little bit hard to, to plant the foot and throw the ball. It wasn't his best kick wash, his best throw. And uh, great job by uh, Block to come up and make that spectacular catch. And, and Christian Block, who also plays receiver, had 12 catches this year for 147 yards, so he's used to catching the ball. So Logan Clay's back, and he will throw over to oh, and tapped him, and they uh, almost they almost gave it right back. Christian to him. Block almost got tapped, uh, tipped up back into his hands again. So second and ten for the Giants. Ball in the 50-yard line. This time Christian Block is, uh, sorry, pardon me. Yes, Christian Block is in a quarterback and he will throw the ball and intercepted, intercepted by number 17. Intended for number 82, but he will find lots of room down his left side of the field. So caught on the play by number 17, Trent Raven. And will give uh, St. John's the ball back at about the 50 yard line of Elmwood, Greg. So one turnover leads to another. End of the third quarter now, so this is gonna be huge. Will this be end up being the TSN turning point or the LRSD TV turning, turning point? point. <laughs> Unnecessary roughness, blindside block. St. John's number 51. This is after the interception, first down. So the turnover counts. However, unnecessary roughness after the play take, uh, is done, so that will bring the ball back. So that that's a huge penalty for St. John's because it that pretty much wipes out their game. Brings it back, you know, 15 yards from where the ball was intercepted, or back from where the ball was intercepted. So that's a dramatic change in field, about 30 yards. Very, very costly penalty for St. John's. Miles Cakewash lines up under center. And the handoff inside run by Mapoyo. And we haven't heard from Mapoyo for a little while. And that will be the end of the third quarter. Given that we just finished on a penalty. So Brian, a little bit of a trivia question for you. Which Bomber alumni, famous Bomber alumni, local guy, played at St. John's High School? Old lineman? Chris Walby. Chris Walby, very good. Chris Walby. There, St. John's has a rich tradition of football. Uh, no, numerous coaches, high school coaches have uh, coached there. And obviously tons of football players have gone on to play university and, and CFL out of St. John's. And, uh, also Elmwood as well, uh, but St. John's has always had that really rich tradition of, uh, of having a lot of great players coming out of that school and coaches. And they've done a, a fantastic job of developing this team this year. And this isn't the first time we've had the uh, uh, privilege of watching the St. John's football team play at the Investors Group Field. Uh, it just seems to be a consistent, you know, uh, big part of their school. I, mean, I enjoy watching them play. Can't recall, maybe this is just me, you know, I'm getting old, but uh, first time I think we've seen Elmwood play in one of our uh, championship games since we've been taken over as LRSD TV. Glad to have them, we're having a great game tonight. So cake wash under center. And we're half inside to move. We will be by number one again, Mopoyo. Now I think he might have got back to this line of scrimmage. Uh, no, they're giving him a gain of three or four yards, so it's it's three and, a sh and, and about one. And they are staying out the field, and they're going to go for it. So with 11.30 in the final quarter of the Division Three. Winnipeg High School Football League, Ball League Championship. Scored 10 to 10.
simple quarterback sneak, keep it simple. Looks like they got enough for a yard. Jake Wash will keep the ball and should have enough for the first down. So that will take them up to their own 34 yard line. out to his right. Yogi McCoyle will find some room and some extra push for help from his line. Should be close to the first down marker again. Looks like he's going to be about a yard short. But a great run by McCoyle. So actually they gave him first down. Just a quick keep quarterback keeper right up the gut there. And that will give him about five yards of the next 10, of the 10 that they need to keep going. Kind of caught Elmwood uh, defense sleeping on that one. Smart play by uh, by Cakewash to do that and good call by Coach McNoll. Coach, Coach Fox for Elmwood is, is uh, certainly yelling at his troops to get ready now. Wash continues under center, two backs behind him, three backs behind him. Mapoyo takes the ball again and will get very close to the first down. Tackled on the play by number 32, Antonio Calder. So we'll be just short. Oh no, they're giving a first down. Pardon me for my vantage point. It looks like he was short, but giving him a first down. So St. John's will continue to march the ball. Colton Blaze, number 69 for uh, Elmwood is just checking in. So they're, they're throwing up uh, another defense alignment in, into there, keeping the, the D-line fresh. Hey, let's go. Okay. Reach out to but he's caught behind the line. And there, flying on the play on Nasir Refness, I'm pretty sure tackling above the shoulders on that one. Well, almost a face mask if that's not what it was. Jeremy Hampshire, 53, came across the line and uh, stuck out his big arm there. And I don't know if he caught a face mask or we'll see what the rest Unnecessary called. roughness, Elmwood, number 53. 15 yards of the previous line of scrimmage, first down. So that's a tough penalty for Elmwood to take right now because number 53, Jeremy Hampshire, made a great effort to get in behind the line and, and stop on the play, but unfortunately, just a bit of a high tackle. Yeah, you can see it there. He just kind of wrapped his head, head and arm around his head there. Obviously, with the head contact, we want to rule those things out, so it's so going to draw a penalty. Puts the ball on the 35-yard line of Elmwood. Cake wash under center. And we'll continue to hand that ball off to Mapoyo, who will push and push and push. And continues and should have enough for the first down. Great push from the St. John's offensive line to support their running back, Mapoyo. Boy, it's good. It's been McPoyle all this series. We've, they've probably gone about 60 yards now in this drive. So very impressed by uh, St. John's here. And when we look at the numbers that we have, uh, Jacob McPoyle had uh, 44 carries in the regular season, but according to what we had, only for 210 yards. I, I'm pretty sure he's going to have a, a good chunk tonight. And a good push by uh, Mapoyo again. And he'll get three or four yards on the play, but it, it seems like uh, St. John's has gone away from the pass for a bit. You know what? It's working, Brian. A little bit of smash mouth football right now. Kill some, take some time off the clock. And that's a good point, right? They've killed a significant amount of time on the clock, and we're down to seven and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. We've had the ball for almost five minutes now. McPoyle keeps the ball again and he will push and push and get close to the first down. Another great run by McPoyle there. He's got to be close to 100 yards rushing tonight. 
you know, excellent effort. He just would not go down, kept his legs pumping. And tackled on the play by number 32, Antonio Calder. So it looks like a, a third and a long one yard here. So tough call here for Coach McMillan. Does he kick the field goal or does he go for it? Looks Antonio like a point. Calder had uh, 24 tackles during the regular season. And Cakewash will push and will get close to the first down. It's hard to tell from our vantage point if he got it. Yeah, they're giving it to him. First down St. John's. Great push. Uh, by the offensive line from St. John's to help him get that first down. So first and 10 from the Elmwood 15 yard line. Six minutes left in the fourth quarter. And they Defense! have killed a lot of clock. Defense! Defense! Almost Auburn. fumbled the ball. And Kaquash still has the ball and he will be tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Great pursuit by number 36 from Elmwood. And that is Aaron Kasimba. Good pursuit angle by Kasimba to make that tackle. Looks like a lot of the uh, Elmwood players are, are doing a little bit of both ways here. Some of their better players making plays on offense and defense. So that's a loss of two from Kikos. Oh, pitch it off to McCoy. Oh. About great tackle on the play by number seven. Well, there's Christian a, Block. There is a player hurt. Boy, those guys are throwing their bodies around. Yeah, they are not. They are leaving it on the field now. You can see. And we have a timeout, an injury timeout. In fact, we had, at least at one moment, we had two St. John's players down, but we have just one now. And, and I'm trying to get an indication of who had that tackle. All right. So I'm just going to illustrate here. We got two lead backs who are going to come up through the hole here. And uh, uh, number one's going to pursue down and cut back in and we'll watch these two linebackers these three linebackers and see what uh, their flow to the ball so just let it roll here and what yeah what a great job number seven coming across for uh, Elmwood that's uh, Christian Block we've he's playing both offense and defense here he came across and did made a great tackle so the injury was for Nick Wackos, and he came up and he sort of jumped up, and it was interesting. He went straight back to the huddle, but he got told by the refs, no, sorry, bud, you got to take a timeout. So up on the play by Asher Wood, and he will put the St. John's Tigers up by three with four minutes and 39 seconds left. They will be up 13 to 10. So a great series down the, fil the field, which killed a lot of clock, uh, puts uh, St. John's up, and... Elwood will take over with four minutes and 39 seconds left, down by three. So that drive took seven minutes and almost 30 seconds off the clock, Brian. So Elmwood has 4.39 to score, to tie, or to take the lead here. So I suspect that we're, I, I don't think Elmwood would do anything other than uh, give it to their number one back there, Melville. I think that's been their bread and butter all year, so you might as well keep moving it with him. So big series. They still have lots of time. There's no panic. And Christian Block will line up under center. And he rolls back and he's gonna look to pass and complete on the play to... We're trying to, to complete on the play to number eight, Logan Clays, the other quarterback. Ball's so, on the 45, uh, Elmwood 45-yard line. I got to believe that they are anticipating some running from uh, Elmwood and didn't see it, and that may have helped them get that first down here on a pass play. So Christian block under center. And this time, Melville will find it, but again, he'll be tough to bring down, and he will get back to the line of scrimmage. Riley Mercer for St. John's comes up and makes the tackle. Wow. But I will tell you, if he hadn't caught him by the foot there, he was gone. 
There would have been at least first down yardage in there for him. Great play by uh, Mercer on that to come up and make that play. So that will make it second and 10. Three minutes and 29 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Down three. And Christian Block lines up under center and in a bunch formation. And he will roll back to pass, drop back to pass, pardon me, and intercepted on the play by number 18. And St. John's will take over. Picked off on the play by number 18, Micah Humberstone. And that is a huge play for St. John's to take the ball back from Elmwood, who needed to score. You know, I'm going to refer back to the play before when uh, Riley Mercer came up and made that tackle for no gain or little gain, putting uh, Elmwood in second and long. That was a great play. And obviously 18 here coming across Micah Humberstone with the interception. Not a great throw, but... Uh, but a great catch by uh, Humberstone, and you know what? What I like to see at the end of the play there is you put both hands on the ball to make sure you had ball security. So this is uh, this is huge. This could be the dagger for Elmwood. I will be very surprised if we see the ball go into the air here. Well, that would be uh, with two minutes and 52 seconds left. Uh, I, I suspect that you're going to see a lot of uh, Mapoyo, Mapoyo right, Mapoyo left. So a timeout on the field. Did, Brian, did you see who called the timeout? Was it? It was St. John's. St. John's called the timeout. So assuming Elmwood has two timeouts here, that if it's a run play, plus it's a three-minute warning probably as well, 2.52 left. So um, St. John's probably, or Elmwood still has two timeouts left, so you have to use them wisely here to stop the clock if it's a run play. So first and 10 from the 40-yard line. Two minutes and 52 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Up by three, St. John's continue or takes over. Hands off to Mapoyo. Caught on the play almost right away by a number of Elmwood players. Gain of about three, four yards though. Mapoyo wasn't going to be brought down that easy. So Mapoyo had great ball uh, control there. He had two hands on the ball. And you know what the coaches are screaming at the Elmwood players is to rip the ball out, punch the ball out. So. Give up a few more yards, just an attempt to get that ball out. Two minutes and 42 seconds, the clock is running. Second and six. Big play for St. John's. Three backs, and who else but Mapoyo? And he will be picked up. No, he's gonna push, and but short of the first down by about two, three yards. Gonna be short by a couple yards, it looks like. 2.20 left in the quarter here. Looks like St. John's gonna go for it. Timeout, oh, timeout, Elmwood. They should have called it a little earlier to burn three seconds off the clock. So Coach McMillan's probably going to be telling his troops there to, hey, just get a good push. We only need two yards, ball control. Make sure that we don't put the ball on the ground or, or give up a fumble here. What's worked well for St. John's is just a, a quick quarterback keeper. Uh, Elmwood seems to have trouble uh, stopping that. Now, if I'm Elmwood, I'm going to tell the, the troops to make sure that they don't allow that quarterback keeper so I'd put both I'd put two guys in the A gap making sure that they eliminate that quarterback keeper. So both sides will be lining up and tightening up that front side I gotta believe. Oh the drama Brian the drama. The big boys are up front only one receiver wide to his left one to his right and I did see fumble? some early movement in there. That might have been a fumble Brian. I thought I saw some early movement in there too, Greg. No flag. And no. it is Elmwood football. So this is it. Two minutes and 15 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And Elmwood will get a chance to at least tie this game. The ball was on the ground, Brian. I'm looking at the at the screen here. And, and uh, there was not a good exchange between the center and quarterback. Yeah. 
So here we go. Well, Elmwood's got 215. And they are putting Christian Block at quarterback. And nope, pro, sorry, Logan Clays, who pitch it back to Logan to Melville. And a great anticipation and tackle on the play by number 66 from St. John's. Great tackle by Jordy Boulette. Nice job by that D line coming down the line of scrimmage, making that play. Second and, uh, well, about 10. Jordy Boulette, who had 14 tackles during the regular season. And the uh, St. John's team is trying to get their fans revved up. And I'll tell you, they are loud for the crowd size they got here. They're making a lot of noise, Greg. It's great. Empty backfield, Brian. So plays under center. And he will drop back. And he'll throw it in. Oh, into the hands of his intended receiver, number 35 from Elmwood. And he had Jacobian O'Connor. They had one wide open receiver right down the sideline here. I don't know if we could get that on screen here, get a replay up from up high, but uh, the wide receiver on the right hand side was wide open. I think that was number 88, Nicholas Ariagata. So here we go. This could be for all the marbles on this play. Under center, dropping back and looking to his right. And will throw the ball into the air, and it's a bit of a floater, and intercepted on the play by Asher Wood. And he will take the ball down and turn over on downs, uh, on interception, pardon me. Asher Wood will give St. John's the ball back with a minute 30 left in the game, and I got to believe that's it. You know what? The Elmwood coaches saw that that player was wide open. They tried to go to it. Just not a great throw, and an even better play by Asher Wood to come across and pick that off. So there is an outside chance. Uh, there are neither team has any timeouts left. And you know what? It is terrible conditions out there. You never know. They, a ball could squirt out here or fumble or whatever. It's high school football. Anything could happen. And the, while St. John's has three backs and hands it off to Mapoyo, who will find some room to the right, but not enough for, you know, about three or four yards. So. Far away from first down, so this is a big down for St. John's. And he stayed in bounds, so that's good. For St. John's, the clock will continue to to run when the referee blows it in. Oh, St. Uh, Elmwood just called a timeout. Oh. So Elmwood will stop the clock here with 124. Second and about seven. So look for Elmwood to come up and make a big play, punch the ball out, get the ball on the ground. What a fantastic game we've had here, Greg. And again, folks, uh, stay tuned. We're going to have the presentation of the, of the uh, Canada Inns Bowl trophy and the banners for the championship team and the finalists. What a great game we've had here, Brian. Uh, what a pleasure to watch high school football with all the snow, with all the drama, everything else. It's been a fantastic evening here at Investors Group Field. All right, so here we go. Second and seven. So, second and seven. Luke Wash on the center, hands it off to Mapoyo. Who will push and get uh, about two, three yards short of a first down? A minute twenty left in the in the final quarter. Not enough for a first down. So what will St. John's do here? Will they punt, or will they try one more offensive play? Looks like they're going to run a play here, Brian. I, you know, a punt of thirty yards or so might, would giving them a super long field would be uh, not a bad play either. But you know what, they've had great success going for third down conversions. Three backs, three receivers. Offside. Offside, Elmwood, and that may be what does it. With the penalty, that will give St. John's a first down if it is against Elmwood. Offside. 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 
And we're waiting for the call. Procedure against St. John's. An offside against, so this should be offsetting penalty, shouldn't it? You usually don't see uh, a procedure, procedure and offside on St. the same John's play. Number 65. Yes. Offside, Elmwood. Those Elmwood player lost down on the field here. Third down. Elmwood player down on the field, number seven, Christian Block. And that's one of the, been one of their key players today, so to lose him at this point in time in the game is not good for Elmwood if they can get the ball back and he's not on the field. And he's, uh, well, for whatever happened here, he's in a lot of pain. So Coach McMillan uh, is going to go for it, second and two. So third and two. Or sorry, third and two. We'll see what, uh, what uh, if there's any trickery or if they're going to just go smash ball football here. And I'm not exactly sure what's happened to young Christian Block here, but he's in some serious discomfort. So, uh, Greg, you know, one minute on the clock. Big play. Let's just say St. John's doesn't get the first down and Elmwood gets the ball back. What do you think they've got to do? Well, I think they have to uh, go back to their big stud uh, running back, Melville. I think they need to be able to give it to him. I, I, at this point, if I'm Elmwood, I'm not trusting the passing game right now. They've had a couple of interceptions in a row. So I'd, I would continue to either give it uh, to Melville or, or run some reverses. And if they have any trick plays up the up the sleeve, I would I'd try to run those. So Brian, what, Brian, who would you give, uh, you know, who's the player of the game for Elmwood and, and St. John's if you had to give it out today or right now? Well, right now, the player of game for me is, for Elmwood, is, is clearly the young Evan Melville. Mm -hmm. And uh, for St. John's, well, I got to I got to continue with Asher Wood. Yeah, Asher Wood has had a, a really good game. He's playing both sides of the ball. Um, we stepped away here, and I'm going to a little bit of a shameless plug there, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you're aware, but as part of LRSD TV, we have a, a, a live 24/7 radio station called LRSD Radio, and you can find it on LRSDRadio.ca. It is a student-led. Uh, radio station and we invite you to watch at any point in time no commercials except for some local school division uh, 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 things to listen to and of course down the road uh, coming up very soon the 2018 4a uh, provincial volleyball championships uh, girls game at six o'clock boys game at eight o'clock on at december on december 3rd and we invite you to come back to lrsd uh, to uh, join us for those games also and i believe we're also going to be doing the uh the basketball games as well. Basketball, basketball in the basketball. future. And last year we did hockey. We we're anticipating doing hockey also. And we've there's been some rumblings of some other things. So, uh, you know, and, and some exciting things that LRC TV has been very lucky enough and, and thankful to. We will take this opportunity to thank the Winnipeg High School Football League as well as, of course, Manitoba High School Athletic Association for inviting us to be part of all this because this is exciting for us also to be here. And don't forget, this is all student-made. We're we're co we're lucky and fortunate to be commentating, but but the the kids on the field that are interviewing the coaches who went out to the press conference on Wednesday to cover the Winnipeg High School Football League press conference and all the camera uh, people and, and directors and producers are all students who are learning how to how to use this craft and and uh, a number of them gone on to get jobs at TSN and. Other, uh, Blue other Bombers, Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Blue CBC, Bombers, CBC and, stuff. and Winnipeg Jets and stuff yeah. like that. So it's a great program. So we're watching young Christian Block be uh, lifted off the field. And so it looks like it's a lot more serious than we anticipated. Uh, we are hoping for the best for Christian uh, to be taken out at this point in time of the game. I've got to believe it's this poor young man's going to have a tough time with that. But we wish him all the, all the best. 
Uh, we're getting ready to get back to live football again here with one minute left in the fourth quarter. Elmwood down three uh, by three, 13 to 10. Third and three for St. John's, who are going to go for it and try to retain possession of the ball and end the clock on Elmwood. Cake wash under center, and he will hand the ball to Mapoya, who will be caught That's well behind there. first down. Turnover on downs for Elmwood, so they will have one more chance at least one more chance, pardon me, for uh, to tie, or at least tie, if not win this game. Remember, all they need is a field goal to tie with 56 seconds left. Ball is on the 41-yard line. So here we go. All the First drama. and 10 from the 41-yard line, and no timeouts, I believe, for either team. So... Logan plays pitches out to pitches out to Melville. Oh, sorry, pardon me. 35. Uh, O'Connor took the ball and tackled on the play by number 55 from St. John's, Nick Nick Wacos. Wacos is name we called a lot tonight, and again he's had a few tackles tonight and over the course of the uh, the the high school league as well. 24 tackles during the regular season. Plays under center. Pitches back to Melville. He was looking. To, oh, and he would be brought down well behind the line. And he was looking for someone to get open down the field. And it looks like he was intending for number 81, Emmanuel M. Amaliri, but wasn't able to make it happen. So number 38, Jericho Laura, came up and made the sack. He was totally looking to throw the ball there. And I just just didn't have a wide open receiver. Well played by St. John's. So third and 14. This is this is the ball game for Elmwood in this play. 17 seconds left. 14. Logan Clay is under center. Receiver to his left and right. Pitch back. And this time they're going to try it again. And throwing it up down the... Down and knocked down on the play by who else? Asher Wood. And that should be the ball game with two seconds left. That will be it. St. John's up by three with two seconds left in the Division Three final for the Winnipeg High School Football League. So they will take over from downs on downs for at the uh, Elmwood 37 yard line. What a fantastic football game we've had, Greg. Well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Coach Fox over at uh, Elmwood and, and uh, Principal Mike Babb. What a great program, f high school football program that they're running out of Elmwood. And obviously, a big congratulations to to uh, Coach McMillan and the St. John's Tigers. The Canada Bowl champions. For 2018 from the Investors Group Field, St. John's Tigers defeat the Elmwood Giants 13-10. Elmwood Giants congratulations, St. John's. What a great game for, that we've had today, and I'll tell you, Typical, and we've said this, typical Winnipeg football, and we've had a lot of fun, and what a great game to watch. Yeah, it's just amazing, the enthusiasm, the fans that are out here supporting their their, their friends and family members, and uh, what a great environment this has been with the weather and the snow and, and cleaning the field and the great plays. What a fantastic evening we've had here tonight. So we are going to head down to for the... Uh, trophy presentations in just a moment. And just a reminder to join us tomorrow night. Five o'clock is the CTV Bowl with Kelvin versus River East. And at 7.30, it's the big championship game for the Winnipeg High School Football League. Vincent Massey versus St. Paul's. What And what a matchup that's going to be. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a few highlights for you as we're getting ready for the trophy presentations. And we we'll invite you to watch and come back to us in just a minute as the, as the trophy presentations take place. But in the meantime, what's a, what, what a great football game we've had today.
Okay, folks, and we are just about getting ready for the trophy presentations for the Division Three Championship. Uh, congratulations once again to St. John's and, and, and to Elmwood, of course. And, you know, the score, 13-10, one might think it was a bit of a defensive battle, but in fact, the ball moved back and forth across the field quite well. Uh, we saw action from both sides of the ball. So we look forward to the presentation and we're hoping to catch an interview from the MVP in just a minute. Commissioner Rick Hankwich has the uh, banners and the trophy on the field. And shortly we'll be calling up the team captains for presentation of the awards. Asher Wood. I'll probably get a scene in the background. This is great. Yeah, yeah, it's here. Yeah. And am I throwing it up to anyone out there? And at this time, I'd like to call on the Elmwood Giants captains to receive their finalist banner, again from Rick Henkwich. Congratulations to the Elmo Giants on a very fine effort this evening, and congratulations to a very fine season. How about a nice round of applause? And now I'd like to call on the captains of the St. John's Tigers to accept your championship trophy, the winners of the 2018 Canad Inns Bowl, the St. John's Tigers. Thank you very much to all the parents and fans that came out to support your teams. Please drive home safely.
I'm here with Coach Grant McMillan of the champion St. John's Tigers. <laughs> Coach, I heard, uh, I heard before the game ended that it's been since 1980 that this Thank team you. has been champions. How, uh, how much does this mean for you that you guys have broken the curse? Uh, it's unbelievable. I still, I'm in shock. Um, when you said champions, um, that was that was that was real. Um, it's incredible. We've worked so hard all year. Um, it's just a tribute to the effort that's been put in by the players. What can you say about the great fans that you guys had out here today to support your team? Oh my goodness, they're spectacular. Um, the entire the school, the community um, has rallied around this, um, this this game, and it's just been phenomenal. All right, thanks, Coach. Once again, congratulations on the championship win. That was Coach Grant McMillan of the St. John's Tigers. Anyways, we'll throw it up to our highlights of this game right now.